Hi, my name is Jared, and this is Horror Obsession. Today, I want to talk about Fear Street 1978, once again directed by Leia Janiak, the second installment of the Netflix trilogy based on the books of the same name by R.L. Stein. If you want my thoughts on 1994, check out that video, which should be linked at the top of the screen, unless a medieval witch possessed me and made me murder all my friends, in which case, I'm probably in jail or dead. I've been dying for an opportunity to try out the Conjuring defense ever since my Chewbacca defense got me out of that triple homicide last year. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chewbacca. Chewbacca is a Wookiee from the planet Kishik, but Chewbacca lives on the planet Endor. Now think about that. That does not make sense. So anyway, Fear Street 1978. Before we get into spoilers, this movie is actually very good. It is much better than 1994, which had a lot of problems that really hurt the movie overall. 1978 basically fixes all of the gripes I had with 1994, and the only major problem left was the lighting. I watched this movie in the dark with all of the lights out at night and still couldn't see what was happening in some of the scenes. I mean, look at this scene. I didn't darken this at all. The plot, the pacing, and most notably the characters are dramatically improved over the first entry, which has a cascading effect which caused the tension and kill scenes to be much scarier since I identified with the characters and wanted them to live. The tonal issues in 1994 are completely solved as this movie has the guts to actually take itself seriously. There is still levity and humor, but it is way better timed in the momentum of the narrative. When the jokes happen, whether you think they are funny or not, they don't immediately ruin all the tension built by the previous scenes. Therefore, the movie builds in importance the entire way, culminating in a brutal ending which was a bit predictable, but overall very satisfying. I would definitely recommend this movie to anyone, especially big horror fans, and if you are not a big horror fan, it is worth checking out the first movie in order to get to this one, which I absolutely loved. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get into spoilers. Rather than exhaustively going through everything I like or don't like about this movie, I wanted to compare and contrast a couple key elements between 1978 and 1994 to highlight how this movie fixed most of the problems with the first movie and why those fixes improved the movie so much. In my video on 1994, I talked about the love story and the tonal issues as being the two biggest problems. 1994 has a terrible love story, mostly due to the fact Dina is irrational, angry, controlling, and abusive, but is still supposed to be the protagonist. I'm the protagonist. And seen sympathetically. By contrast, in 1978, Ziggy and Nick have a much more enjoyable and believable love story. Ziggy is definitely a bit of a hothead, which is her main character flaw, but she is funny, impetuous, but in a charming way, and most importantly, she is a realistic teenager. Her and Nick have several scenes of cute flirting. Yeah, you're right. Can we, uh, can we go back to the easy questions? Okay. How about... Would you ever kiss the weird girl? They both have independent goals and ambitions, though one of their mutual ones is to explore their blooming relationship. And unlike the Josh and Kate relationship, you could actually see these two being a good match. And unlike Dina and Sam, they are both actually likable characters. They aren't even that amazingly written, but it is absolutely competent, which goes to show the bar to write a good slasher love story is not very high. And 1978 easily jumps that hurdle. Another major improvement in 1978 is showing not telling. In 1994, the writers reference Dina's horrible, drunken father constantly, but we never see him, committing the cardinal sin of telling, not showing. The result is a character which is hard to sympathize with, since she has huge temper issues and lashes out at people constantly, presumably due to her difficult upbringing, which we never see, which is basically like that kid in high school who told you about his super hot girlfriend, but she goes to another school, so you can't meet her. You just have to take my word for it. Ziggy also has temper issues, but the flashback part of the movie starts out by showing some pretty brutal bullying, where she gets strung up by a tree and her arm burned by a lighter. The 
The bullies would have kept going if not for their intervention of Nick and Kurt, and so Ziggy's angry resentment is much more believable and therefore more relatable. Simple changes such as showing the root cause of a character's anguish can make all the difference for a character and therefore the movie, and Ziggy and Dina are perfect examples of that. It doesn't hurt that Sadie Sink has a much better and charismatic performance than Kiana Madeira, but the writing wasn't doing Kiana any favors. Along the same lines, I ragged on Dina for not going through any appreciable character arc, since her want and need both revolve entirely around wanting to be with Sam. Like I said in my last video, her character want is to get back together with Sam, and her need is to fix Sam's witch curse thing. This leaves very little room for character growth, and ends up making 1994 feel flat, whereas 1978 does a much better job with creating a compelling protagonist. I'm the protagonist. Ziggy is temperamental and emotional, very common characteristics for teenagers, and very relatable. She is somewhat justified, as mentioned before, due to the terrible bullying, but it is complicated because she has been caught breaking a bunch of rules, so it's not unreasonable for the other kids to assume she stole the money. Her character, Want, is to get revenge on the rest of the world for being cruel to her, and she spends a decent amount of the start of the movie pursuing this goal. As with most character wants, this ends up being shown to be superficial, and once the plot of the movie gets going, her character Need gets revealed to reconnect with her sister, Alice, and form a loving sibling relationship. As with most horror movies, she ends up getting her want, but not her need, putting her squarely in the bittersweet ending. She kind of achieves her need at first, but then Alice gets murdered at the end, so the benefits of her achieving this goal are instantly squashed, so I'd still say the ending is bittersweet. The other major flaw in 1994 was the tonal issues. The humor was too frequent and poorly timed in a way which ended up preventing me from getting into any of the horror scenes, even though they were very well done. I loved a lot of the kill scenes, and in most slashers, that's enough to carry the entire film. The poorly written characters made it more difficult, but the tone yo-yoing back and forth between sarcastic indifference and horrified fear muted the emotional impact of everything. In 1978, Leia Janiak did pick a lane, and and ends up going for a scary horror movie, probably the right choice when trying to make a scary horror movie. The playful, lighthearted script adds enough levity to release some of the tension after it has been built, a critical aspect of any successful horror as the change in emotion is more impactful than trying to keep the tension taut for the entire film. 1978 benefits from this immensely, as the movie is actually quite scary and suspenseful, and I was thoroughly engaged the entire time. The movie flew by, and I was genuinely rooting for the characters to survive because I like them so much, the exact emotion any horror director should be aiming for. Overall, 1978 was a huge improvement over 1994 and fixed most of the problems with the first entry. I'm not sure if Janiak is improving as a director, whether it was having Sadie Sink and Ryan Simpkins in the lead roles to carry the film, or whether 1978 benefited from the Empire Strikes Back or the Two Towers effect, where the middle entry in the trilogy is the best because it is not burdened with introducing nor concluding the larger narrative, and can focus on telling a compelling story. I will absolutely be checking out 1666, and hopefully Janiac can wrap up the trilogy with a quality period piece horror, which looks like will basically be a horror film version of The Crucible, a premise with a lot of promise. I am feeling optimistic about this movie, though maybe that's because of my blood tinted glasses, a prescription from my optometrist for what he calls horror obsession. Itis.